Good morning. Welcome. We'll get started in a minute here. We're going to let everyone take some time to filter on in. Thank you for joining us today. Just watching our entrance number, making sure it slows down a little bit before I get us started. Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. Hope you're having a good start to your Monday. It looks like we've slowed down a little bit, so I'll get us started here. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Learning Libby with the Experts webinar. We have a morning chock full of info for you here. Uh, we're going to start with our basics all about the Libby app before we roll into a deep dive where we take a look at some of our favorite tips and tricks all about that Libby app. Uh, we'll have a little break in the middle if you need to stretch your legs or get some coffee, and you can either use that time for that or take a mini quiz with us. So without any further delay, I'm going to get us started here. My name is Joe, and I'm here from Overdrive. I'm one half of our digital bookmobile team. We have a truck that we send across the U.S. and Canada to visit libraries and schools, and I get to do all the planning for that. So not only do we have that wonderful truck here at Overdrive, we also had our original flagship app, and now we are working with the Libby app, our brand new app, making things just a little bit easier for y'all while we work with our ebooks and audiobooks. I'm here with my teammate. Hi there, I'm Marissa. Like Joe said, we have a, a digital bookmobile that goes all over the U.S. and Canada, and I always like to say he does the boring stuff, the budget, stays home at the office, sits at a desk all day. I'm the one who gets to travel with our digital bookmobile, so I get the fun side of our job, um, and I go and teach people how to use the Libby app. Um, hundreds and hundreds of patrons are, um, I have worked with uh, teaching them how to do those very basics, which will be our first session, and then also some tips and tricks to really get um, a robust experience out of Libby as well. So we're really excited to be here, even if it is virtually this time, uh, we'll make our way around to you uh, in a physical event one day, I hope, fingers crossed. Definitely. So we're going to wrap up 2020, uh, 2021, staying safe at home, and then we'll be heading back out on the road in 2022. So before we get started, I just have a few housekeeping items I wanted to cover. We do have captions enabled. You can adjust those, whether that's turning them off or on, in your Zoom meeting controls by tapping on the box that says CC. Additionally, if they are in your way at any point, uh, but you still want them on, you can move them around your screen just by dragging them with your mouse. You can ask Marissa and I questions throughout the entire webinar. You can find the button to do that. Also in those Zoom meeting controls, it says Q&A. Type out your question and leave that box open uh, so we can answer it. You'll see the answer pop up under the Answered tab. We are recording our session this morning and you'll receive an email tomorrow morning from Zoom that includes a link to this recorded presentation. So you can always review anything we covered. If you need to hop out early, you can cover anything that happens after you leave. So it's a great tool to have at your disposal. And with this in mind, and since we know that everyone learns at a different pace, for this basic session, we uh, suggest that you wait to try out the Libby app until after we wrap up this first portion. So watch through with us and uh, just keep in mind that you can review that recording and then wait to try to download it and play around until after we hit that middle mark. When you leave the meeting, a survey is going to pop up in your web browser. Fill that out for us. Let us know what you thought. We'd greatly appreciate it. And lastly, we'll be connecting iPads into the webinar this morning. And when we do this, every once in a while, Zoom shrinks the screen. We want to make sure you can see Libby in her full glory. And Marissa will be sending out some instructions shortly. It's a super quick fix to get that full view back. So don't worry about that. Just look for those in the chat. All right, I've got all the boring stuff out of the way. So I'm going to take a second here and get my iPad connected. 
Now, as I mentioned, Marissa and I are both using iPads, but the Libby app is available for download on iOS, so that's Apple mobile devices, or Android mobile devices. So whether it's your iPhone or your iPad, your typical smartphone or tablet, things like Samsung's and Google devices, you're gonna see that for download in those app stores. Or if you want to use Libby in a browser on your computer, you can go to libbyapp.com. Now, whether you are using Libby on your smartphone or an iPad or libbyapp.com, once we get into the app itself, everything is going to look exactly the same. All right, I'm all connected here. I'm gonna let Marissa send out those instructions and I'm going to take us through the download and sign-in process. So for my Apple users, you'll be headed to your blue App Store icon. If you're on an Android device, you'll head into the Google Play Store. From here, we're going to just go into a search and we're going to type in Libby and tap enter. Libby should be one of the first results that pops up at the top of the screen. And we can see right here, Libby by Overdrive. And it's that maroon icon with Libby reading her book. Now from here, we can download this free app by tapping get or install right next to the app icon. On my screen, it says open because I already have Libby downloaded. So like I said, Libby's completely free. Tap get or install. You might need to sign into your app store. Uh, but once that's all downloaded, just hang on tight, leave the App Store, and look for that freshly downloaded Libby app on your screen. When we open up Libby for the first time, she's got a few questions for us to help us find our library and get signed in with our library card. Now, you'll only have to do this the very first time you set up Libby, and then going forward, she'll save your library card so you can always hop right back into whatever you were reading or listening to. So for question number one, do you have a library card? I'll say yes. And now we need to find our library location. When I get my very first device set up, I recommend using I'll search for a library. And we'll go into this in just a second. I wanted to point out, however, this copy from my other device button. So after your very first device is set up, if you want to add Libby to another device, like say you set it up on your smartphone, but now you want to add it to your tablet or to your computer, you can use copy from my other device to pull all of the info that we're about to set up on our first device in on that second or third or fourth device. So the process can be super quick and simple. Now, like I said, we're doing our first setup here. So I'm going to go with, I'll search for a library. And I like this option because I can search by the name of my library, the city I live in, or my zip code, which is what I'll be going with today. Whoops. There we go. And today we are visiting Greenfield Public Library and we can see that location here. But what you all want to look for is this up at the top, CW Mars. This is the name of your digital collection, and that's what Marissa and I are going to be referring to a lot. That's the collection that all of the libraries share digitally in Libby. So we can see there's 170 branches in total. I'm going to tap on this box to choose CW Mars, and we're almost done. We're just going to add our library account details. This will be your library card number. It's usually printed under a barcode on that card. And then we'll tap on next and we'll need to enter our PIN or our password. Now your library will have some suggestions for you just in case you forgot it. But if you can't figure it out, if you have any trouble with your PIN or your library card, just reach out to your local library and they'll be able to help. With all of that entered, I'll tap on sign in. And as long as I didn't type anything wrong, there we go, the screen refreshes. And now we have access to our library's complete collection of eBooks, audiobooks, and magazines all in Libby. I'm gonna hand it off to Marissa now and she's going to take us through those basics, the everyday things we need to know for our, you know, happy functioning within the Libby app. 
Marissa is going to be using a demo library from Overdrive today. So you'll see a different logo on her screen and her collections might look a little different, but everything will function exactly the same. I'll be hanging out in the Q&A, so if you have any questions as we go, feel free to send those through. It's all yours, Marissa. All right, thank you, Joe. So I just wanna give one final reminder here, especially because I think a few people popped in after we talked about it. At the bottom of my screen, you should be able to see my navigation bar. It has five icons within it. If you cannot see that, then I want you to tap on chat within Zoom's meeting controls down at the bottom of your screen, and then follow those instructions that Joe is chatting out right now. It's gonna make sure that you can see the bottom of my screen, and it's really gonna help you follow along today, especially during this getting started session. It just takes a couple of quicks. It is very, very simple to fix. So we are gonna talk about all of these icons at some point in the presentation today, but I'm going to start out talking about the second one that you see down in that navigation bar, which is the library card. So mine is blue. It's always gonna be the colors of your library when you have it tapped. And the library card is where you go to browse your library's collection of ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines. You're gonna see everything here. You don't know exactly what you're looking for when you're browsing around the library, right? We're just kind of uh, digitally walking around, seeing if something sparks interest. So that library card, like I said, is where we go to browse. Now we call this page the digital collection page and up at the top of your digital collection you're going to see some filters. These filters are a really great place to start when you're browsing if you tap on just added it's going to be a list of titles that your library recently purchased and added to the collection. Popular and random do speak for themselves, but available now is going to be a list of titles that uh, currently don't have a wait list, so you can borrow them straight away and begin enjoying them. And then probably one of the most popular ways for all of us to find our books is by subject, right? So if you are someone who likes romance or history or historical fiction, you can tap on subjects there are quite a few of them, and then choose the subject in which you want to see a list of books for. So up at the top, those filters, a really great place to start. As you make your way down the page here, that's when you're going to start to see some guides. Now, guides are different from library to library, so yours aren't going to look exactly like my demo library here. But what the guides do is just kind of point you in the direction of content based on a certain criteria. So I've seen libraries with language specific guides uh, or um, kids and teens, those are very popular as well. So by age group, and you can find books by tapping into those guides as well. Now, the third section of this page as we scroll down these are going to be librarian lists. So these are curated collections that your library puts together for you. These, unlike the filters and the guides, which stay the same throughout the year, these curated collections are going to change all of the time. Think of it like if you were to walk into the physical library during the summer and they had a really nice display of beach reads, and then you go back in the winter and that display changes over to cozy mysteries or holiday recipe guides. So these librarian lists, they're going to rotate and change in and out so that you can always find something fresh and new. So like I said in that navigation bar, the library card is for browsing. You don't know what you're looking for. You just wanna see everything the library has to offer. Now, if you do have something specific in mind, maybe you wanna look for a certain title or a specific author, that is when you're gonna tap on the first icon instead. So you see that magnifying glass, it's my very first icon in the navigation bar. 
When you tap on that, that is going to allow you to perform a search. So you can uh, type in a title or an author, a magazine or series name. I'm gonna search for the book Still Life here. So I've typed in my title. I can tap on any of these if I want to. I always recommend just tapping on the search button within your device's keyboard. That way everything gets captured in that search. And uh, usually the book that you're searching for is gonna show up at the top there. So on this page, there are two things that I wanna point out for you. The first is going to be how you can visually tell the difference between an ebook versus an audiobook. So your library actually purchases that those titles in each format specifically. So you can't uh, borrow an audiobook and then switch it over into an ebook or vice versa. You have to borrow it in the format that you want to enjoy it in. So when you're looking for an audiobook, what you're gonna keep your eyes peeled for is a square jacket cover. I always like to say a nice way to remember it is it looks like a CD case. You listen to CDs, you listen to audiobooks. Right underneath that, you'll see a set of headphones and then the duration of the audiobook as well. So those are three visual indicators you can use to know that that book is going to be a book that you listen to. Now, if you're interested in reading instead, what you're gonna do is look for the rectangular jacket cover. So it quite literally looks like a book that you pull off the bookshelf. They're almost always rectangular and the uh, eBooks are rectangular in the Libby app as well. So that's how you can tell the difference between an eBook and an audiobook. The other thing I wanna point out is how you can tell the difference between titles that are available to borrow right away and a title that you'll have to join a waiting list for. So you can see the audiobook version here says place hold right next to that jacket cover. That means there's currently someone reading every copy that the library owns. So you just have to join the waiting list and uh, wait your turn here. Very, very simple process to do that. All you have to do is tap on place hold. That's gonna bring you to the confirmation page here. And down at the bottom of the screen, it will tell you approximately how long it's gonna take for that book to get to you. And then you can tap on that big maroon button to confirm that you want to place a hold. Of course, Libby's like, not today, Marissa. Let me try one more time. There you go. If you ever run into an error, just try again or re-close the app down, reopen it. It usually fixes that for you. All right. So now that I've confirmed that I've placed a hold on this book, down at the bottom, Libby's giving me a few options for what to do next. I'm gonna go ahead and say, keep browsing. That's just gonna pop us right on back to the same page that I was on. So you can see um, the audiobook version now is on my hold shelf. Now let's walk through the borrowing process. So I could tap on borrow next to Still Life, the ebook version here. But if you don't know what a book is about yet, you can tap on the jacket cover itself. That's going to take you to the details page where you get all of that good information about what the book is about. If you decide that is a fitting book for you, then you can go ahead and tap on borrow right underneath the jacket cover on this page. That's when it brings us to the borrowing confirmation page. Now up at the top here, I wanna point out, you can see it's telling us we're borrowing still life for 14 days. 14 days is the default lending period at your library. However, you can tap on that 14 day button there and switch your lending period over to 21 days. And that will be your default lending period moving forward. You need to do this for each format. So you have to do it once for ebooks, once for audiobooks and magazines, and then you will be good to go. So now that I've changed my lending period here, I'm gonna come down to that big red borrow button. 
and confirm that I want to borrow this book. And now we can see that Libby is downloading this, pardon me, this title for offline use. So you can see there's a check mark in that circle there. As soon as you get that check mark, that means you can go out into the woods, up in an airplane. You no longer need cell phone service or cellular uh, or Wi-Fi to be able to enjoy your book. Now I'm going to go ahead and tap on open book here. And this is where Libby gives me the option to read the book directly in the Libby app. So the, the app that I'm showing you right now, or you can, if you have a Kindle device that you prefer to read on instead, like a paper white, then you can tap on Kindle here, sign into your Amazon account and deliver it to your Kindle. It is uh, just a two or three steps. It does require those Amazon credentials, so make sure you have those with you, but very simple process there. I am going to open up the book in Libby just to show you a few of the key reading features within the Libby app. Now, you can see that this book actually opened up um, a, a bit of the way through here, and that's because I borrowed this book in the past, and Libby does remember your spot in a title even after it returns to the library. So you never have to worry if you don't finish a book in time, getting it back, having to find that place again, Libby's going to remember it. On this lower menu, you'll see I'm on page 10 of 575. Now, to make those menus drop out of the way, you just have to tap in the center of the screen. They're kind of blocking the words right now, but if you tap in the center of the screen, they disappear. And then to page forward throughout the book, you just have to tap or swipe on the right side of the screen, the left side if you want to go backwards. Now, I'm going to tap in the center of the screen here because I want to bring those menus back up to show you how you can customize your reading appearance to really meet your needs. So up at the top of the screen here in the right-hand side, you'll see an A icon. That A stands for appearance. So whenever you wanna change your appearance, go ahead and tap on that. And within your appearance, there are a few ways that you can customize the um, ebook experience. First is text scale. You can use this slider here to increase or decrease the font size. Next, we have lighting. I'm currently in bright mode. That is Libby's default, but we also have sepia and this dark mode available to you as well if you want something a little easier on your eyes. And then last but not least, we have book design. Now, book design is just Libby's fancy way of saying font. So these are the different font styles that you can put Libby into. I always like to point out this open dyslexic font here at the bottom because it might help some users with dyslexia while reading. All right, I know I just changed these all here for you to see, but I'm actually gonna put them right back to my default. And the reason that I put them back to my default is because these settings are sticky. And what I mean by sticky is you're only gonna have to customize your reading appearance once per device. And then moving forward, Libby's going to remember those customizations and deliver titles to you with them in place. You're not gonna have to change your font size every time or your background color. Libby's gonna remember that for you. All right, I'm going to tap on hide here to drop that appearance menu down off the screen. And then I'm going to pop out of this ebook here and we're going to pop into an audiobook so I can talk about um, two important things in there. And I actually didn't go to the right screen here. There we go. Now that takes us over to our shelf. And I'm going to reorient everyone now down at the bottom of the screen. So let's go down there. The first thing I wanna point out is the now reading bar. This is Libby's way of giving you easy access to the very last book that you had open in the app. So anytime you see that now reading bar, you can tap on it. It's gonna open your book right back up to the spot you left off on. 
I'm going to dismiss that for now so we can see the full navigation bar here. So we started out the presentation on that second icon. It looks like the library card. And remember, that's where you go to browse the entire collection of ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines. You're just walking around digitally trying to see if something sparks your interest. Then we searched for something specific with that magnifying glass. That's where you can type in your author or title and look for exactly what you are interested in. We are now over on the shelf. That is the fourth icon here in the Libby or in the navigation bar, rather. You can see it looks like a stack of books that's sitting on a shelf. So your shelf is where your borrowed books are. So your current loans and then the current books that you're waiting on the holds list for. So on the top of your shelf here, you can see there are filters, your loan filter or hold filter, if you want to specifically look at one of those two lists. On the main page of your shelf, you're going to see all of your loans. So these are all the books that we currently have borrowed from the library. Here is the book that I just borrowed with you earlier in the presentation and an audiobook that I borrowed uh, last week. I'm going to go ahead and open that up here. So there are two things I want to point out in this audiobook experience. The first is at the top. That's where you're going to find your uh, reading progress. I'm about 30% of the way through here, as you can see. Down at the bottom is where you're going to find your player. And as soon as you're ready to begin listening to the book, all you have to do is tap on play. That will start the narrator from talking. Now I can hear him on my end. You should not be able to hear him on yours so that you can hear me instead. But what I think is really important here to mention, I always make sure everyone knows, is that Libby is designed to play in the background of your phone. Now, what that means is you can tap on play, start that narrator, and then minimize the Libby app and start online shopping, or put your screen to sleep and start doing the dishes. And the book is going to continue to play even if the app isn't open up on your screen. Now, with that in mind, what I want you to remember is when you're done listening to your audiobook for the time being, tap on pause. That's going to stop that narrator. And then you can move on with your day and you don't have to worry about the book continuing to play in the background and losing your spot the next time you want to start listening to your book again. So always tap on pause at the end of your session and then you'll be good to go. All right, I'm going to come back up to the top here, that back button up in the left hand corner. I'm going to tap on that to return to my shelf. Now, down at the bottom of the screen again, I just want to point out, you'll see a new now reading bar. It's always the last book that you had open in the Libby app. So since I opened that audiobook, it has switched over again. I'm going to dismiss that. So your shelf is where all of your current borrowed books are. These are the current books that you have loaned out from the library um, digitally through Libby and then the current books you're waiting on your wait list for. Right next door, you'll see a clock. This clock is your timeline. And your timeline is all of the history that you've had in the Libby app. So this is gonna show you past loans, past holds, renewals, and returns. So I just want to make that um, really clear. The shelf is your current books that you have borrowed. You can pick them up off your shelf and begin reading them right away. The clock is all of your history. That's going to be all of your past. All right, we're going to finish off the presentation today in the very center of our navigation bar. That is the Libby icon. And the Libby icon is our Libby menu. So the Libby menu, you can think of it as your app settings if you would like, if that makes it easier. I do want to point out the little bubble on Libby's head with the one inside. That's her letting me know that I have one notification waiting for me. I'm going to tap on the Libby menu 
and you can see it appears out on the right side of the screen. Now up at the top of the menu here, I can see that notification she was giving me the um, badge about. So my hold lapsed. Um, they're going to try to deliver it again later. I'll tell you what that means here in a second. I'm going to dismiss this out of the way. I'm swiping it to the left. And you can see a new box has taken its place. So this box says manage notifications. Managing your notifications is how you can be alerted about important events in the Libby app. And Libby actually brings this menu to you and it prompts you to manage your notifications the very first time you place a hold. Because I've already done that, I have to come up here the hard way to show you where that menu is going to be after you do it the first time. But I just want to come in here to show you what that's going to look like when Libby does prompt you to do so. So there are three ways to be notified about important events in Libby. By default, you will be set to this blue notification line. This is a push notification. And a push notification appears on your device's screen regardless of what app you have open. So that means you can be browsing Facebook or reading the news. And the, if a alert comes in, a notification will appear directly on your screen. Now you can change that over to a menu badge instead if you'd like. That is an in-app notification, meaning you have to open up Libby to see it. And you actually saw what that looks like. So it was the little red bubble that was on Libby's head down in the navigation bar. And then when we opened the Libby menu, it was in the box at the top of the screen. I swiped it out of the way. That, again, you have to open up Libby to see that. Of course, you can always ignore if you um, don't want that particular event as well. Down below that are all of the things you can be notified about. The most important one that I'm going to talk about is hold ready. I want you to keep that on the blue notification line there. The reason I recommend that you keep that as a push notification is because when it's your turn on a wait list, Libby's going to give you a three day period where that book is in limbo and you are the only person who can take action on it. Now in that three day period, the three actions that you can take are to borrow the hold, to cancel the hold, or to have the hold delivered later. Now, if you want to have a hold delivered later, you choose a time period to stay at the top of a wait list. Once that time period ends, Libby will deliver it to you again. So a good way to stay at the top. If in that three-day period you don't take action, then Libby is going to automatically deliver the title later to you one time as a courtesy. Then you'll be prompted again and you'll have a second three day period to take action. If in the second three day period you don't take action again, that's when Libby's going to cancel your hold. You'll have to go and find the book again, rejoin the wait list that puts you at the bottom. So just make sure you are taking action when Libby gives you that notification. That's why I recommend you get it as a push notification. All right, I'm going to come back up to the top and tap on back here and turn my light back on. It's motion censored, so I'm too still in here. All right, so right underneath our manage notification button, you'll see your libraries. Now you can add multiple library cards to Libby. You can see I have two demo cards here attached on my demo account. Now in Massachusetts, you have a very special circumstance that um, everyone in the entire United States is jealous of you for. And that is your single library card allows you to access eight digital collections within Massachusetts. It is unlike any state in the United States when it comes to that. We're very jealous as Ohio residents. I'm gonna show you how to do that here. And I recommend watching the recording and following these steps so you can add all eight collections. So in the Libby menu, come down to add a library. 
This is after you already added your first library card to CW Mars. Up at the top here, you'll see it says library name, city, or zip. I actually want you to ignore that. I want you to type in Massachusetts. I want you to type in your state name. And then when you do that, all eight collections are going to appear on the screen. So this is the full list here of all of the library digital collections that you have access to with your single library card. So I'm just gonna start at the top of this list. First, I'm going to attach um, the Noble digital collection. So I'm gonna tap on Noble here. Now this page should look a little familiar. When you set up your first CW collection, it's gonna be interlibrary account details. When you um, start adding those additional digital collections, I want you to tap on, I'm visiting from another library. When you tap on that, select CW Mars, and then type in the same library card number that you use to sign into your CW Mars collection. It'll be your card number and your pin. And then you'll follow those directions again and again until you have all eight of the digital collections put into Libby. Then when you tap on the Libby menu down in the navigation bar, all eight of your library digital collections will appear underneath your libraries and you can tap on them to switch between the two. Some libraries purchase books that others don't. Some might have shorter wait lists. So it really is beneficial for you to add all eight digital collections so that you can have a huge selection of titles to choose from. Now, down at the bottom of the screen, you'll also see help and support. If you come down to this uh, maroon, get some help uh, button here, this is going to allow you to find common solutions to frequently asked questions. One that I wanna point out here is copy to another device. This is a very important button, especially for you as Massachusetts residents, because let's say the first device you set up is your phone. You add all eight of those digital collections to your phone. Then you come in here and you use copy to another device. It's a one single eight digit code that takes all of those cards and puts it onto your second device. So much, much speedier when you are going through that sign in process. Up at the top of the screen, you'll see how can we help in this little box here. This is where you can ask a question or search for a topic. I'm going to search for returning titles early here. So I keep this getting started session to the very basic, absolutely need to know features of the Libby app. And so because titles return automatically on their due date, I don't prioritize it here in this presentation, but I like to use it just as a simple way to show you how easy it is to find out more about Libby. So I'm gonna type in return here and then tap on search in my keyboard. Libby's giving me a few articles. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on returning books because that is what I'm looking for. And here she gives me the instructions on how to return a title early if I do finish it before my uh, due date. Now, if you can't find in uh, what you're looking for using this feature here, you can come down to ask our support team. This button here will allow you con to connect with OverDrive's technical support specialists. They are Libby experts and can answer any questions that you have about the Libby app. They're also a friendly group of folks, I promise. And I want you to know how to get there because right now for the next um, 45, 50 minutes, you have Joe and I to answer any questions that you might have. After this webinar ends, you won't have access to us anymore. So I wanna make sure you know how to contact help and support. They will be able to answer any of your questions for you. It's all done be it's all done via email. There we go. And uh, they usually get back to you in a couple of hours. At most, it'll be 24 hours. So keep that in mind as well. All right. 
I'm going to let Joe take back over on the screen here because that wraps up all of our getting started um, tips here. And I'm going to let him get us into some next steps. Awesome. Thanks, Marissa. And yes, our tech support is available 24-7, 365 days of the year. But I did also want to mention uh, Lisa is here today with us from the library and just mentioning that they had a Kindle Paperwhite. And so if you have questions, um, if you're using Amazon devices or reading with Kindle using Libby, great resource there in your own library. And uh, yeah, so not only do you have access to your friendly neighborhood librarians, you've also got Overdrive tech support. All right, so we have about five minutes until we head into our deep dive session. So feel free to use this time now to stretch, to get some water or some coffee, whatever you need. Uh, just kind of get yourselves comfortable and we will be heading into our next session at 1045. During this time, uh, we recommend if you'd like, you can download the app, start to play around. If you have any questions, send them through. Marissa and I will both still be here because of course you can ask us anything and you can even ask those questions anonymously. So just keep that in mind. At 1045, when we head into that deep dive session, we only recommend sticking around if you feel ready to take on more info. If you're feeling confident and um, you know, like you, you got the basics and you're ready for some next steps and some more info, it's a great session but we don't want anyone to leave feeling overwhelmed. So just remember, we are recording today and you'll be able to review that as early as tomorrow. So when we hit 10.45, before we go into the deep dive, I'll give everyone a last call and you can hop off then if you'd like, just so that way, you know, everyone leaves with the info they need today. We've got a few minutes. I think I can sneak in a couple quiz questions here. But of course, Marissa's hanging out in the Q&A until she starts our deep dive session. So feel free to send those questions through, take a little break, whatever you need to do. And uh, we'll be doing this for the next couple of minutes. So the questions are going to pop up on your screen automatically. Just give it your best answer. If you really don't know, you can choose unsure. So for question number one, in the navigation bar, what do you tap to browse your library's collection? The magnifying glass, the library card, the Libby menu, the stack of books, or the clock? This is when you want that feeling of walking around that library browsing, even though it's digital, not looking for anything specific, just looking for the next good book. I'm going to close this one in five, four, three, two, one. All right, a couple different answers coming through. But when you want to browse your library's collection to find a new book to read, not looking for anything specific, we're going to tap on that library card. So we need to go to the library, we need our card. Up at the top, we could find things by those filters or the guides your library has put together or my favorite, the different curated lists. So just like those end caps within the library with things like beach reads, your library does that in Libby as well. When you know exactly what you want, tap on that magnifying glass and you can search for a title, an author, a series name, or the name of a magazine, and you'll find hopefully that exact match that way. All right, for question number two, we're gonna stick around in the navigation bar. What do you tap to find your current loans and holds? The magnifying glass, the library card, the Libby menu, the stack of books, or the clock? Your current loans and holds live on your shelf. How do we get there? I'm gonna close this one in five, four, three, two, one. All right, excellent work. Got 100% correct on the answers we received. When you would like to check out your current loans and holds, whatever you're borrowing or waiting for, tap on that stack of books icon to get to your shelf. Up at the top, we could filter out and look at just our loans or just our holds. Or if you scroll through this first main page here, you'll see all of the books you have borrowed um, from the most recent opened to the 
uh, oldest that you haven't opened at all or that it's been a while since you've opened back up. If you have any books available to borrow right away, they'll be up at the top and pretty hard to miss. All right. Usually I can get a couple other questions in, but we are right at time. So I am going to head into this slide here. So thank you, everyone. Uh, this is that last call I promised. We are about to head into our tips and tricks session. So we don't want anyone feeling overwhelmed. If you are all done for today, remember you can review that recording tomorrow. If you're heading out, you can tap leave in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. When you do, a survey is going to pop up in your browser. Fill that out for us. Let us know what you thought about today. Uh, and if you're leaving, thank you so much for coming in for our basics. For those of you sticking around, we're about to head into our tips and tricks session. You know, we had a few people join while we were in the middle of our basics. So I'm gonna just gonna quickly go through our housekeeping here. Closed captioning is enabled for this webinar. You can adjust that in your Zoom meeting controls uh, in the box that says CC. You can also ask us questions throughout the entire webinar. For this session, uh, we may save some of those questions for the last 10 or 15 minutes. We've got four tips and tricks we're going to get through, and then we set aside some time for live demo on screen. So if you don't see an answer right away, it might say that this will be answered live. As I mentioned, we are recording, and you'll get that recording in an email tomorrow morning from Zoom. So feel free if you need to hop off at any point, know that you can always review what you miss. And when I end the webinar today, a survey is going to pop up in your web browser. Fill that out for us. Let us know what you thought. And just like before, sometimes Zoom cuts off part of the screen display when we share our iPads. And I'll be sending out instructions once Marissa gets connected so you can see her full screen. All right, we have four wonderful tips and tricks for you. We're going to start with magazines. There have been some great updates in the Libby app, and so the experience is totally different now. Then we're going to look at ways that we can kind of customize our browsing experience and find the books we like faster by filtering and refining lists. Then we're going to talk about our favorite tip, tags, where we look at what they are, why we love them, and how we use them, hopefully how you can too. Before we wrap up with notes and highlights, a tip not just for students. All right, I'm gonna hand it off to Marissa and she's gonna get connected here. Uh, as mentioned before, I'll be hanging out in Q&A, so if you have any questions, send those through. All right, thank you, Joe. I'm just getting my screen connected here. Um, another reminder, as soon as my screen comes up, if you can't see that bottom navigation bar there, I want to make sure you are going into the chat within Zoom's meeting controls. That way you can follow Joe's instructions on how to uh, change your Zoom ratio so that you can see the bottom of my screen here. So our uh, tips and tricks session does move slightly faster just because there's a lot of goodies here that we talk about, but you have that recording. So don't worry if you miss anything. I am going to jump right in though. So we're gonna jump into a magazine first. Our first tip is all about navigating within magazines and a few of the Libby updates that we have made recently. Drop my water there. Now I um, already have a magazine downloaded here on my screen. The reason that I do that is because magazines are image heavy and sometimes they take a while to download. I didn't wanna um, elongate this session here for you. So when you open a magazine up at the top and the bottom of the screen, you'll have menus just like in those eBooks and audiobooks. Now, magazines do have this added bar here. This is um, a list of all the thumbnails for each of the pages. And if you have perfect vision and want to use these thumbnails to navigate throughout the magazine, you're more than welcome to. Um, I am going to show you a few other ways that you can navigate throughout the magazine as well. So I'm gonna drop these menus down off the screen by tapping in the center of the screen. And then the second way to navigate, just like we learned in the ebook, you tap or swipe on the right side of the screen. 
This will allow you to continue to page forward throughout the magazine. If you're someone who likes to read from front to back, all of the ads, all of the articles, that is going to be your best way to navigate throughout is just tapping on the side of the screen there. If you're like me and sometimes you borrow a magazine and there's only one or two articles you're interested in and then you'll send it right on back to the library, I recommend tapping or swiping until you get to the table of contents. And then these are all links. So you can tap on any of these articles here. Let's say I wanna look at this article about the outdoor awards and it will drag you right over to that page. So I'm on page 58 now. Now, this is the traditional magazine view. You can use your fingers to pinch in and out of the screen if you'd like to zoom in and out to read that article. But down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see this icon that is a circle. It has a little page moving up and down. If you tap on that icon there, then the article actually comes up in this really nice menu. This is one of our new updates. In this menu, you can scroll up and down to read the article. All of the font stays at the same size and you're able to uh, read it very easily in this menu. Now, speaking of our font size, you'll see that A icon here at the top of the screen. You'll recognize this from that ebook experience. If you've borrowed an ebook and adjusted your reading appearance settings, then your magazine will already have those settings in place. So this is actually the font size that I um, have mine customized to. If you haven't done that yet, all you have to do is tap on the A icon and follow those same directions I showed you in the ebook experience, and that will customize the font size here in this magazine menu. Now, in addition to this nice scrolling menu, up at the top, you'll see some arrows pointing forward and backward. These are one of my favorite new updates here in the loop. My mouse is just has a mind of its own. Um, this is one of my favorite updates. If you tap on those pointers, it will skip over the ads to the very next article in the magazine. So you're not having to look at that coach bag or that new deodorant someone came out with. You'll be able to get all of the good information that you want and skip over the rest. Now, right in the center of those arrows, you'll see a table of contents icon. If you tap on that, that will allow you to view the Libby table of contents here. You'll see all those article names. And if you have a specific one you want to look at, just tap on that, it'll drag you right on over. And we're still in that nice scrolling menu here, as you can see. Now, when you want to leave the magazine after you're finished, first, you're gonna have to drop this menu out of the way. You can tap, tap on back to do that. I have little hiccups, I'm, I apologize. I'm going to tap on back there. That takes us to our traditional magazine view here, like you see. Tap on the very center of the screen here. That's gonna bring up those menus up at the top and the bottom. And all you have to do is tap on back to leave that magazine. So that is tip number one, a quick and easy tip there, all about the different ways that you can navigate throughout and a few of those updates that we love. I'm now gonna move into tip number two, and that is gonna be all about um, finding the books that you like faster. So I'm gonna come down to the browse page here, that digital collection page on that library card icon. And the first thing I'm gonna show you here in this tip is um, how to customize uh, your preferences. So that way you're um, setting a app wide filter to filter out content that you're not interested in. So on your digital collection page, to set an app wide filter, you're going to scroll down just below your guides. Remember your guides 
are um, going to look different from mine. Every library has different guides. However, this bottom button here that says preferences is going to be the same for everyone. This is an app-wide preference. These preferences are going to be saved and applied to all lists in the Libby app. And this is really great in a few different scenarios. So the first I'll talk about, I think is the most common is language. Right now I have Libby set to any, that means all the different languages can show up in my browsing and searches. However, I only speak English. So I'm only gonna really be able to read English titles. And so instead of any, I'm going to set my language here in Libby to English and I will eventually apply that preference. Two other common scenarios are format. Right now I'm seeing ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines in my searches. If you are someone who specifically likes a certain type of format, whether it's ebooks or audiobooks, you can set that preference here. And that way the additional formats are being filtered out. So if you're an audiobook lover, every time you perform a, perform a search with an audiobook filter, you're only going to see audiobooks when you do searching or browsing. Last one I'll point out is audience. Right now I'm seeing everything. If you are someone who has um, young kids at home or you wanna filter out the kids content, there are some audience filters here. Let's say it's a young kiddo with uh, their own tablet. You wanna make sure they're not seeing adult content. You can set a juvenile filter. That way they're only seeing content that's age appropriate for them. So those are app-wide filters, as I said. I am going to stick with just my English filter here and tap apply preference. My mouse is really going crazy. I wish it'd stop moving around. There we go. Now that I've refreshed the page and I've applied that preference, I'll scroll down and you can see right next to preferences, I have a number one next to it. So this is Libby telling me I have one filter in place that is filtering out my browsing and searching. The reason I point this out for you is sometimes you're gonna search for a book and it's not gonna show up um, in your search. There are two reasons that could happen. The first is the library doesn't own a copy of that title. You can reach out to them and ask them to purchase it if you'd like. The second scenario is you have a preference in place that is filtering that title out of the library. I always like to use classics in this example. Every library owns all of the classics, right? The Great Gatsby, every library owns that. Let's say you search for the Great Gatsby, it's not showing up in your search. It is likely that you have a preference set, maybe a juvenile preference, maybe a language preference that is filtering the Great Gatsby out of your search. So when you run into that issue, clear your preferences, see if it shows up then. If it doesn't, that means the library hasn't purchased that book and you'll have to go and ask them to purchase it. So that is the app wide um, preference there. Now I'm going to talk about how to temporarily filter your searches. So up at the top here is where we're going to start, but first I'm going to give you a little prompt. So let's say for this scenario where I need to find a book fast, my mom and I are going on a road trip to Dollywood tomorrow. So for this hypothetical road trip, I need an audiobook for us to listen to. I need it to be available now because I don't want to join a wait list if our road trip is tomorrow. I'm going to let my mom uh, choose the genres here. She's a big fan of uh, historical fiction mystery titles. So I'll, that's the subject that I'll go for. And then last but not least, we want something that is a new release. So maybe it came out in the last year or so. So like I said, we'll start with one of these filters up at the top here. Available now is perfectly fitting for this example. I want it to be available now, so I might as well start in that list there. Up at the top here, you can see I'm looking at available titles in English. Remember, I have that English preference set, so I'm only seeing English titles moving forward. 
This list is 37,000 books, 21,000 audiobooks, and 2,500 magazines. I'm going to filter out the magazines and the ebooks by tapping on audiobooks here. Now that list is dropped down to just those 21,000 audiobooks. So we're already halfway through this filter and refine tip. Now I'm going to come over to the refine button here on the right hand side of the screen. When you tap on this, you'll notice that it was the same categories that you see in the preferences menu. Now, preferences, like I said, are sticky and saved. They'll continue to filter out your lists, even if you close your um, tablet or phone down and a day from now you come back or a week from now, they're going to continue to filter your lists. Refining is temporary. For this search or browsing, um, refining that you're doing right at that moment, and then the next time you go back, it's going to revert back to showing you everything. So sticky and stay, uh, temporary for the search you're making right now. All right, let's go to subject. Like I said, my mom is a mystery historical fiction fan. So I'm gonna first tap on mystery. That list is dropped down from 21,000 to 2,800, but I'm gonna come back to refine. I have one more subject. She doesn't like just mystery, she likes mystery historical fiction. So I'm gonna come down to historical fiction now and tap on that. Now that number has dropped to 206 and it's including mystery and historical fiction. Now, one thing I wanna point out is this isn't showing me a list of mystery titles and historical fiction titles. It's showing me a list of mystery titles that are also historical fiction titles. And I point this out so that you know you can find niche subjects. So I think the sweet spot is two or three of those filters. I've gotten up to five before. It only usually shows you one or two books. It's not like a full nice list to look at. So two or three is the sweet spot there. I'm gonna come down to refine one more time. We have one more criteria to meet and that is a new release. So I'm going to come down to sort by. Right now I'm sorted by popularity. Oh, look, you can see here's that push notification letting me know that I have a title return automatically. Now I'm sorting by popularity. I'm going to instead come down to release date. And now all the newest titles are showing up at the top of this list. As I make my way down the screen, they will get older. So we started out this tip here with almost 70,000 titles and we've narrowed it all the way down to 206 just with a couple of clicks here. And I'm gonna be able to find that book for this hypothetical road trip so much faster with 206 books to choose from instead of those 71,000. So, that is tip number two, filtering and refining your list so that you can find the books that you like faster. Now I'm gonna stay on this screen here. Let's still pretend my mom and I are looking for this book, but now I'm gonna move into tip number three, which is all about tagging titles. As Joe mentioned, this is our favorite tip that we talk about. I am a huge user of tags because tags are a way that you can organize and save books in Libby. You can create your own lists. They can be anything from a wish list to a book club title, um, brainstorm list. I even have a father-in-law who is a huge reader and um, that is all you can get for him for his gifts. Like if you get him anything else, it just sits in a corner. You know he's going to read a book though. So I have his own tag on my personal device throughout the year. Anything I think that might strike his interest, I add it to his tag. And that way, when I go shopping on his birthday or Christmas, I'm at the bookstore. I can open up my Libby tag buy the books that I've um, found throughout the year, and then spend the rest of my time at the bookstore looking for my own books instead. So you can use tags as, um, in as many ways as you'd like, um, and you can really get creative with them. 
So first, let's show you how to tag a title. So as we make our way down this list, and I'm looking for this book, let's say I come across In the Garden of Spite. Now, it looks interesting, but I don't want to read it right now. I'm going to tag it instead. So I'm going to tap on tag, this third option here in Libby. I can create a new tag or add this tag to, an, or add this book to an existing tag that I have by tapping on any of these. Regular tags are just lists that you create. Um, those don't have any special abilities. You just create those lists and that is that. So you can see I have a to be read, my wish list, and then I have a cooking tag as well. Smart tags, however, have special abilities. So this first smart tag, what it's going to do is auto tag any books that you've borrowed in the Libby app. So this is the borrowed smart tag. It'll just keep a track of a full list of books that you've borrowed within the Libby app. And I'll show you why that's awesome in a second. I'll also show you how to delete it if you'd like. Next, I have a notify me tag. Now, the notify me tag is currently specific to magazines. The first time you borrow a magazine, Libby's going to ask you if you'd like to create a notify me tag. Once you say yes, you can name it whatever you'd like. Magazines was the simple option here that I chose. Now, once you create your notify me tag, every time you borrow a magazine, Libby's going to ask, do you want to add this to your notify me tag? And any magazines that are added to your Notify Me tag, you will receive a notification every time a new issue is added to your library's digital collection. So anytime a new issue of The New Yorker comes out, you get a notification, you can go ahead and borrow it, and you're not having to go in search to see if any new issues came out. So smart tags, special abilities, regular tags, just for organizational sake. I'm going to create a new tag to show you how to do that. So I'll tap on new tag here. We can name it and even add a description if you think you'll forget what that tag is about. I use genre tags quite a bit just because I usually have to be in the mood to read a mystery title or a history title. So I just name the, the genre here. You can add a description again if you'd like. I'm just going to tap on done. I know what that means. And now you can see that tag has shown up right next to in the Garden of Spite here. Now, the reason I point that out is because we're still looking for that book for my mom and I, right? As I make my way through this list, let's say I come across the War Widow. Well, I tagged this at one point as to be read. So I, it's on my wish list. I'm probably going to go ahead and borrow it straight away instead of waste my time looking for any other titles. Let's say the War Widow didn't show up here in this search and I continue making my way down this list. Well, now I come across the Devil in the Dark Water and it has my borrowed smart tag next to it. In the past, before borrowed smart tags existed, I probably would have read this book, the first 50 pages of this book, and then the memory sparked. Oh, I've read this in the past. Now I can see it as I search. There's a borrowed tag there. I've borrowed it before in the Libby app. I can just scroll right on past it and um, continue on with my search. So that is tagging titles, how to tag those titles and what those tags mean. Now I'm gonna show you where you can find those tags in the Libby app if you wanna look at it in the list form and how to export those tags out of the app for printing and more. So right now I'm currently looking for that book, right? I'm going to move over to my shelf now. That stack of books that looks like it's sitting on a shelf up at the top of your shelf, right next to your loans and your holds, you'll see your tags starting to be listed out. Libby always gives you two to show you. And then if you tap on more, you'll get that full list of all the tags you have. Now I'm going to tap into my wish list here. I want to view all 36 of those titles that I've tagged as uh, to be read. And here I can 
uh, look at that list. Now, one thing I wanna point out, over on the right side of the screen, you'll see a little library card icon. When you tap on this, not only will you be able to borrow or place a hold directly from this screen without having to go and view the details page or anything like that, down at the bottom of the screen here, you can see that it's showing both of my library cards and it lets me know how many copies are available at each of those libraries. Now, I know I keep saying, especially you in Massachusetts, but that's because you have all the important fun stuff. So you as a Massachusetts um, resident have those eight digital collections you have available to you. When you tap on that library icon, you'll see all eight of your collections here and you'll see what ones have the shortest wait list or if there aren't any titles available there at all. So I wanna make sure you know how to do that. It's always gonna be this library card button here that you see on the right hand side. You'll find that icon in your searches, on your shelf, in your tags, literally everywhere that you look in Libby, you'll see that icon and it really comes in handy. All right, I'm going to drop that out of the way and I'm gonna move back up on the top of the screen here because I wanna point out this actions button. When you tap on actions at the top of your tagged lists, you'll be able to rename your tag or delete it if you are not interested in having that tag. I point this out for that smart borrowed tag if you're not interested in that. In the center there, you'll see export tag. This is how you can print Libby or print your list out or email it to a friend. So I'm gonna tap on export tag here. Now there's three options for what that is going to look like when you export it. I personally like table. You'll figure out what one works best for you. I've seen the, every option there um, is popular. Now, once you're in your data export page, you'll see all those tag books down here at the bottom of the screen in your list. Up at the top in the right hand corner, you'll see a share icon. When you tap on that share icon, you can then send your tag list in a message. You can even email it, or you can tap on print to print out a physical copy and you know, maybe hand it out to all of your book club members so you can choose what book that you want to uh, read next. So the options there, um, quite a few of them, all really great. And that is tip number three. Like I said, our favorite, favorite tip. We love tags. I Definitely my type A personality showing out there with that tip. I have thousands and thousands of books tagged on my Libby app. It is such a good tip there. All right, we're gonna move into tip number four. This is um, our last tip of the day before we get into Q&A. And it's all about making notes and highlights in an ebook, and then we'll talk about how you can export those out of the app for printing and more as well. So I'm going to open up this Pride and Prejudice title here, and I'm going to talk about how you can highlight certain text, whether it's a sentence or a full paragraph, and then how you can reference that later. So I'm going to start at the beginning of a sentence here. I'm going to start at I cannot be otherwise. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do when you want to highlight a section of text is tap and hold your finger on the very first word there. So I'm tapping and holding my finger on I. Now don't tap like this, it's gonna turn the page. Make sure you're tapping and holding your finger on the screen and then dragging it across. Let's say I wanna stop it here after. So I stop my finger there and now I'm lifting up my finger on the screen. That's when I see this highlight option here. I can choose any of these colors if I wanna stay organized. Let's go with green today. Once you choose a color that you want that highlight to be, you just have to tap on that highlight and your note menu will drop down. 
Now, Joe and I are in a book club and I have written full paragraphs in this box here for our book club. But just for the sake of demonstration, I'll do a sentence here, but know that you can put quite a bit in there. And now I'm gonna tap on save. And now I'm going to page forward. So let's say I'm farther in the book now and I wanna reference a note that I've made in the past. What you're gonna do when you wanna look at your notes and highlights is tap on the center of the screen of the book you're currently reading. And then up in the top right hand corner you'll see it's like three bookmarks sitting in a row if you tap on that icon there. you'll be able to see a full list i've made so many notes and highlights in here a full list of all of those those. Um, when you want to jump back to a specific one tap on it it's a link. takes you right on back to that page. And let's say I wanna see what that note was that came with the highlight. I'll tap on the highlight and that note dropped down. So this is a note. Now, this is how you can access your notes and highlights if the book is still on your bookshelf in Libby. Let's say the book's returned to the library though, and maybe book club's coming up and there's a long wait list. So you're not gonna be able to borrow it again. I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can still access those notes and highlights, even though that title has returned to the library. So let's leave Pride and Prejudice here. And what I'm gonna do is uh, go to the details page. So the easiest and quickest way to go to the details page is the magnifying glass down at the bottom of the screen. We showed you this in our getting started session. You just type your book title in and tap on search. Now I'm gonna tap on the jacket cover itself and voila, I'm on the details page. Now, when you get to the details page, you'll see your reading journey. It starts as soon as you borrow a book and then captures all of the um, actions that you take with that book. Once you tap on that reading journey button, you'll recognize up in the top there that actions button, we just talked about it for tags. If you tap on actions, you'll be able to export your reading data. So instead of exporting your tag list, you're exporting your notes and highlights. Same steps I just showed you, you'll just be exporting those notes and highlights instead. If you don't wanna export them out of the app, but you still want to see them, scroll down, you'll see the timeline for this title. I'm still on the reading journey here. Here are three highlights that I've made within this text. If I tap on a highlight, then it is going to show me the full text that I highlighted as well as the note that I made right underneath. So you'll still be able to access those notes and highlights even if the titles return back to the library, you won't ever lose that. So really good feature there. And that wraps up all of our tips and tricks for today. I'm going to let Joe take back over here and he's going to walk us into some next steps. Awesome. Thanks, Marissa. So that wraps up our Learning Libby with the Experts webinar from basics through our tips and tricks here. We are going to open the floor for any questions you might have and uh, we can show those off on the screen. And I'm just looking to make sure I didn't have any questions to Mark. Okay. All right. So the first thing I want to do while you're all typing questions is just point out, you know, one final time where you can find help and support. You know, I know Marissa and I have been with you all morning, but, you know, want to make sure you're never without that easy access to our tech team. So first you'll tap into the Libby menu. And then underneath help and support, we'll tap on get some help. So from here, you have those common solutions and our help bar up top. Under common solutions, I just wanted to point out, if we scroll down a little bit, 
Uh, if there is a feature you think is missing from Libby or something you'd like to see a little different, we have a suggestion box. So you can tap in here and you can give any and all details you'd like and that will go to our app development team. Just wanted to point out, as it says underneath, uh, this is not for recommending titles. So if you're looking for a book that's that you think is missing from your collection, reach out to your librarians. This is just if you think the app needs a different feature, or if you have a problem with just like, if you think this is a little confusing, let them know. They love that feedback so they can make adjustments as well. Uh, but I'm gonna have Marissa tap on back. And then, of course, just a reminder up at the top under how can we help, you can search for just about anything. So if you wanted more info on tags, you could type in tags and tap search. And Libby's going to give us some options here. Um, of course, if you wanted the basic info, you could dive into what are tags, but you already know that from our session here. If you don't find what you need, you can tap on ask our support team and that will prompt you to send an email to them. So whether you were just looking for a little more info on tags, you had some issues with your tags or were confused about something, or if you think you found a bug while you were using something, this is that place to send that through. So a problem, a question, or an idea, and just give as much detail as possible and the tech team will be there to help you out. Awesome. Well, we didn't have any questions come through. So I am going to flip over to this screen. Thank you all so much for joining us this morning and for participating throughout the day. We hope you found some fun and new tips and tricks for the Libya. And we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. So thank you all so much and happy reading. Happy reading.